Hi everybody, it's me Mike Celestino from LaughingPlace.com and this week the fine folks over at Hasbro were kind enough to send us a giant, kind of absurdly giant box that says uh, The Mandalorian on it. Star Wars The Mandalorian, Disney Plus Hasbro. That's the only markings that I have on the outside of this box. There's the bottom, there's the top, the back side is just blank black. I have no idea what's in here, but we're going to find out. I have a feeling it's going to be Star Wars The Mandalorian toys from Hasbro for us to check out, unbox, and review for you here on the Laffy Place YouTube channel. Here we go. Let's check it out. All right, I've got the box laid out here on my floor, and the hashtag on the bottom says Mando Monday, which is the weekly reveal of the new Star Wars The Mandalorian merchandise and I'm gonna go ahead and open up the box and as I guessed it's a pretty much filled with Mandalorian stuff it's kind of a, a big jumble of Mandalorian merchandise let's see what this stuff says we gotta read this before posting that Hasbro did send this over to us for us to review that's cool and then there's some information about the Mandalorian and Mando Mondays, so that's neat. And then let's go through each item one by one. The first of which, okay, so these are the credit series of action figures, and they mean that in two ways. So the first way is that this Imperial Death Trooper figure is meant to represent how it looks in the concept art that plays over the Mandalorian's end credits, okay? And then there's also an included Imperial credit, an actual, I'm not sure if it's metallic or whatever, we're going to open it up and see what that's like inside there, and then you got the Death Trooper with that same kind of paint scheme that you would see in that concept art. A couple weapons, there's the back side, let's see what's next. This is another credit edition figure in the six inch black series line and this one is the title character the Mandalorian as he looks in the credits with a different paint scheme than you see in the actual show itself so it's got some more reds and blues and greens in his uh, armor rather than the more muted tones you would have seen in the live action image there's a couple of his weapons the blaster the pulse rifle and another credit to go along with the credit collection and there's the back side of that let's see what's next okay we've got another Star Wars the Black series figure of the Mandalorian but this one is not in the credit collection this is the Beskar armor Mandalorian now the first version of the Mandalorian that came out in the Black series that I have is the the armor from the first couple episodes of the series and then in episode 3 he upgrades to this more sturdy Beskar armor. And now I'm glad, very glad to have this. And it's got the jetpack or the rising phoenix, as the Mandalorians call it. There's the back side and his usual weapons as well. Okay. So third. Oh boy, I'm so happy to get this one. I've been looking forward to this one quite a bit. This is the armorer from... The Mandalorian. She's in uh, three episodes in season one, and uh, she's the character at the end of the first season who tasks the Mandalorian with returning the child to his own kind. And she's got a couple of her welding tools and that very cool helmet and her very cool armor. Uh, and there's the back side there. So I'm excited to open that one up. Let's see. This is the third one in the credit collection and this is Cara Dune as she would look in the concept art over the end credits with a different colors than usual much more much deeper colors like you would see in those illustrations rather than you know the the again the muted tones you would see on the show and you got the color in her hair there and everything too she's got a knife she's got a blaster and she's got a blaster rifle too and another credit and then I'm pretty psyched to have this one, too. This is the 
Heavy Infantry Mandalorian. Now, I missed out on this when it was released in the regular Black Series, so I don't have this character as he appears in his normal color tones like you see on the show, but now I've got him in the credit collection version as he would have appeared in that concept art, again with some different coloring, a different paint scheme. There's his heavy blaster and stuff, and another credit. That's a real nice looking figure. There's the back side. Okay, what else we got here? This is a big one. This is Monopoly Star Wars The Mandalorian Edition from Hasbro. Everybody knows Monopoly, obviously, and this one is another version with uh, the Mandalorian theming. It always jumps out at me in these themed versions of Monopoly that they always keep the go-to-jail and uh, in-jail spaces the same, despite everything else having been changed for the theme. And here's all the tokens you can use. You got the Mandalorian, Cara Dune, Kuil the Ugnaught, IG-11, the Child, the Death Trooper, uh, was that Moff Gideon, and a Stormtrooper. And looks like you use credits instead of money. Pretty cool, pretty neat. And all the spaces, of course, are going to be themed to, I think, probably locations and ships from The Mandalorian. Here's another figure. This is the smaller scale vintage collection from uh, Hasbro, but with the Kenner branding on there, reflecting the old school. Star Wars figures that came out in the late 70s, early 80s. And this one's the Incinerator Trooper who appeared uh, at the end of Season 1 but was first featured in a video game called Star Wars The Force Unleashed and they liked it and they brought it in to the show and made it canon. So this is the smaller scale, 3 and 3 quarter inch action figure. On the back there, we've got the other figures that are available. This one's the Incinerator Trooper we've got here, Hondo Onaka, Anakin Skywalker, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Darth Maul, Chirrut Imwe from Rogue One, Arc Trooper Fives from The Clone Wars, and then Luke Skywalker Jedi Knight from Return of the Jedi. Vintage Collection. And another Vintage Collection figure in the same series. This one is Cara Dune. We saw in a larger scale before, and this is three and three quarter inch scale. And this is the carbonized uh, version of Cara Dune. So she's a little like shinier than the other one, I think. And here are the figures on the back. There are the Mandalorian, Cara Dune, Remnant, Stormtrooper, and the Death Trooper. These are all in the carbonized collection. So they just look, I think they just look a little glossier than the regular figures, if you can see that on her paint there. Okay, some things in cardboard boxes. But first, let's see what this is. This is Star Wars Mission Fleet, and I think this is intended for younger kids. You got the Mandalorian and the child on the speeder bike. There's also the floating pram there, so that'll be fun to open up. And here's what it looks like on the back, just detailing everything you get in there. Jetpack, blaster, pulse rifle, everything you would want for a little kid who is into the Mandalorian. It looks like it has a firing missile launcher attached to the speeder bike there too, so that's cool. There's the side, side. Oh, oh another, oh, this is cool. Vintage collection. I don't have that. That's the Mandalorian vintage collection with the child and the Camtono. And some other fun stuff in there. Oh, so this, you can see behind the sticker, they kind of hid it behind there, but you've got Pedro Pascal's head. So you can have him with the helmet off. That's really neat. I'm really glad to have that one. The backside is the same as that previous one before. And this one is labeled as Din Jaren, the Mandalorian, just because I think it's the one with the, you know, the you can have his helmet off. So that's why they've used his uh, real name, too. And then another carbonized edition figure, the Imperial Death Trooper in the three and three quarter inch vintage collection. So we saw the larger scale 
credit collection Death Trooper earlier. There's the back side. Cool. And looks like another vintage series. No, this is carbon, yeah, carbonized vintage collection. Yeah. This is the Remnant Stormtrooper carbonized version. So he's like shinier with the blaster rifle. And then another Din Djarin, but this one is just labeled as the Mandalorian, and this is the carbonized version of his armor from the first couple episodes of the series before he upgraded to the Beskar armor. And again, this is like the shinier version of that armor. Not sure uh, I understand the idea behind that completely, but I guess it's appealing to some people. And again, he's got the two weapons, and he's very shiny looking. Okay, next big item. Look how exciting this is. It is the Darksaber from The Mandalorian. First appeared in Star Wars The Clone Wars animated series, and then it showed up again in Star Wars Rebels the animated series, and now of course it's featured in The Mandalorian. If you saw the very, very end of season one, Moff Gideon, played by Giancarlo Esposito, pulled out this bad boy and sliced open the TIE Fighter cockpit that he was trapped in. And I'm assuming it's going to show up again in the show before too long. And this one's got a lot of cool effects. It's got, it says Ancient Mandalorian Lightsaber. We've got sound and light effects. We're going to open this up in a little bit and check that out for sure. Okay, looks like the last three things in here are in smaller boxes. So I'll go ahead and open these up. <laughs> okay, these are the bounty collection of the child. Oh gosh, very cute. There's the child in his little hover pram. It's series two, there's the back side. So I've got him floating in the pram there and then one of him out of the pram, kind of chewing on that chain of the little uh, mythosaur skull necklace that he's got. So those are the bounty collection. Let's see what is what's in these other two boxes. Okay, these are more of the bounty collection. Looks like they gave us probably the whole set. This one is... Oh, the child, he's like sitting in an overturned Stormtrooper helmet, which we haven't seen on the show, but it's still very cute. I wonder if that's something coming up, maybe in an upcoming episode, but if not, it's still very cute looking. And then the child, oh, deflecting, shielding himself against the flames in the season one finale in the cantina on the planet Navarro. That's cool, before he passes out. And then lastly, it's the final two of the Bounty Collection, the child toys. Uh, this one looks like he's riding uh, with IG-11 on the speeder bike, probably, and the wind's blowing through his ears and stuff, and it looks like he's just having a lot of fun there. And then finally, it looks like he's like walking against the wind. Oh no, okay, I see, he's supposed to be, I see, there's a control panel back there that you can't, I couldn't even quite make it out, but on the image here I can see it. He's pressing the control panel to turn the noise on and off in the Razor Crest in the cockpit, so that's right out of the show as well. Okay, gang, this is everything that was in that box, as neatly as I could organize it in a fun display. And I think it's time 
to start opening all this stuff up. So I'm going to start uh, at the front, I think, and work my way back. And we'll finish on the Darksaber and play with that a little bit. I think that'll be fun. But let's start with one of these Bounty Collection Baby Yoda the Child guys. And I'm just going to tear it open. I'm going to tear right into it. All right, and he's in his little pouch. He looks adorable. This is gonna look great on a little knick-knack shelf or something. Just a nice little collectible. And it's not like a blind bag or anything. You know what you're getting with these, which is nice. So you could pick the one that you want. And I think that's really fun. I'm gonna set him back down here. And I'm gonna pick up the next one. We'll just keep chugging along here. This is another, the Bounty Collection, the Child Figures, and this is the one where he's pressing the button in the ship. And Mando's getting a little annoyed with him there. But there he is. He looks at him like a, like a little kid, like a little toddler would. He looks at him with those devious eyes and he keeps pressing those buttons uh, on the control panel there. But yeah, another nice little the child figure from the bounty collection I'll set him down and we will move on to the vintage collection this one is Din Jaren the Mandalorian with the child in a three and three quarter inch scale I'm just gonna tear him open and we'll pop him out of the plastic bubble here child we got the Cam Tono, we got Pedro Pascal's head, and weapons, and a couple other things. What's in here? This looks like, oh, a piece of Beskar, and something, oh, just a, a stack of Beskar. So, a tiny little piece of Beskar, and a stack of Beskar that are going to get lost. Okay, I put on Pedro Pascal's head. Took off the helmet and I've got him holding the pulse rifle there. And I've got him holding in the other hand a little piece of Beskar metal. And I put on the back the jetpack or the Rising Phoenix. So this has got to take place at the end of season one when he gets the jetpack. But also, you know, he wouldn't be caught dead with his helmet off. So he doesn't get the jetpack at that point either. So it's not really at any one set point in time. But... It's cool that you have the option of having his head visible. And then you also got a little the child in this one too. Let's see if we can get it in focus. There he is. And he's got... Uh, oh, he's not holding anything. This one, he's not holding anything. He's just a little the child, the baby Yoda. There's the back side with his little... This little uh, potato sack that he wears there. And then here's the helmet if you wanted to see that. The Mandalorian's helmet. And it, it's it got a little ball joint there that sits in a, a socket in the neck. And then we've got the Camtono there. Let me see if this opens up. Yeah, that's cool. So the Camtono does actually open. So that relieves my worry that I was going to immediately lose this stack of the Beskar metal. I'm going to put it right in here. I'm going to put the cover right back on. So I won't lose that instantly after opening it up. Pretty cool, like having that in the three and three quarter inch scale. Don't think they've made the Camtono yet in the larger Black Series 6 inch scale, but yeah, great, nice figure. Of course, he's got the other blaster here in the holster as well. So that's two things that I like to see in my Star Wars action figures, a working holster and the removable helmet, although this time it's it's really a removable head, and then you put the Din Djarin, Pedro Pascal head on there. Okay, we're going to move along. 
And we'll do a Caradune. Okay, this is the carbonized Caradune. Let's pop this one open. Oh, wow, they've got this really securely packed in there. The edge of the bubble is behind the cardboard. I know this is going to be sacrilege, but I'm just tearing it open. Not keeping these in the package, guys. Sorry. We're doing an unboxing here. And there she is, Cara Dune, played by Gina Carano on The Mandalorian. She's got two weapons, a small blaster and the blaster rifle. Let me put them in her hands. All right, I had the larger blaster rifle slung around her shoulders there. And then I've got her smaller blaster there in the right hand ready for action and this is the carbonized version and it's very shiny as you can see so that's the idea with these carbonized figures is that they're just kind of glossy and it, it's a strange concept to me I, I don't quite understand it if you get the reasoning behind that please leave a comment um, I would rather always have the figures look as they do on the screen this is just a, like a shinier version of her armor so that's Cara Dune. Let's move on. We're going to do uh, the Remnant Stormtrooper. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just tearing it open. Not saving these card backs. And this is the carbonized version of the Remnant Stormtrooper. He comes with one weapon. Blaster rifle, and that's going to go right in his hand. And much like Cara Dune's armor in the previous figure, this guy is very shiny. Let's see if I can catch the light right on here. You can kind of get an idea of how shiny his armor is. It doesn't look quite as shiny here on my display as it does in person, so you kind of have to take my word for it. But yeah. It's a shiny stormtrooper, even though he's all beat up and dirty and dusty from the, from being, uh, you know, an imperial remnant. First of all, Empire's not around anymore, so these guys aren't getting fresh armor. And then also they've been spending some time on this lava planet of Navarro that's all dirty and dusty. So, uh, but he is just still got some shine going there from the carbonized series. Let's do the next one. Is the incinerator? Trooper in oh this is not carbonized so that's that's cool I'm actually happy about that it's gonna look closer to the way it looks on the show it's just the regular vintage collection incinerator trooper that attacks our heroes when they're trapped in the cantina on Navarro in season one and he's got his flamethrower, and he's got a flame to put in the flamethrower. Get him out of the bubble here. Oh, and his head's come off already. Which isn't a problem because he's got another one of those ball joints, and it just pops right back on like that. No muss, no fuss. And he's got the backpack with the fuel inside of it that makes it very dangerous. For the wearer, I'm sure one blaster bolt to that and your history. Uh, let's get his arm in the right position here. And put the weapon in his hand. And we'll put the flame coming out of the weapon. Yeah. Cool. Uh, incinerator trooper very neat there's got to be a good way to pose him I don't have time to do it at the moment but I'm gonna try it before we wrap up here we'll move on to the next figure okay another vintage collection carbonized edition figure this one is the Mandalorian again but this is his armor from the first couple episodes before he upgrades So pretty self-explanatory there. 
get them out. Whoa! And we've got the two weapons. Okay, this time I put the pulse rifle in the hole on his back, and I like that it's nice and pretty snug and secure in there. Unlike the larger scale version, I have the six inch version of a, this figure without the carbonization, but uh, the weapon doesn't stay in that hole very well on the six inch version, but I like that it's secure on this one. And then I have him holding the blaster there. So I think you can see how shiny this one is on screen. Look, even his cloak is really shiny and catching the light there. And I guess that's kind of a cool look, but again, it's not quite what the character looks like on screen, but it's just a different, more, more stylized version. We're going to get into that idea a whole lot more as we get into the uh, credit collection coming up here. But we do have one more vintage collection figure in the uh, smaller scale, and this is another carbonized figure, and this time it's the Imperial Death Trooper, who first appeared in Rogue One, a Star Wars story, and they have since been incorporated into some of the other media, including The Mandalorian, which is cool. I'm glad they saw more action, weren't discarded uh, as, you know, characters and, and cool looking armor, and they have a cool sound they make when they speak, very distorted speaking voices and there's the death trooper car carbonized version so he's a bit shinier than you would see him ordinarily it's actually kind of got a little bit of a green tint to him I don't know if that's coming out on screen but ordinarily these guys would just be like jet black scary scary guys to go up against even the weapons are carbonized and a little shinier than they would be. So that's the Death Trooper. And next we'll dive into some more of these bounty collection. The child figures. And this is the one where Baby Yoda is deflecting the flames from the incinerator trooper that we saw earlier. So let's get him out here and we'll have him they got the colors pretty close. <laughs> so he's supposed to be uh, shooting the flame at the child. And, of course, the child puts up the wall of the force powers with his hands. And it makes him pass out right after that. But, yeah. Very cute. Very cute. Very nice little figure. Not uh, posable. They're all... All these little bounty figures are... Static. All right, let's let's do another one of those. This is the one where he's sitting in a stormtrooper helmet. <laughs> and like I said, I don't think we've seen this on the show. I'm pretty sure that we haven't seen this on the show, but maybe we will eventually. There's the back side. Pretty adorable. The child in the uh, overturned Stormtrooper helmet. And then one more of those will move along. And we'll have a, another one later on. This is the one with him in the floating pram. There he is. This is pretty much how you see him most often floating around in his little hover pram. There's the backside. Got the giant eyes going. Little puppy dog eyes. Cool. All right, next I'm going to move on to some of these credit collection figures. And we'll start with another Death Trooper. Pops open pretty easily. And again, these are meant to resemble the characters as they look in the concept art over the end credits at the end of each episode. Get the weapons out of here. Okay, there's the Death Trooper, as it appears in the credit collection, and uh, it is a much lighter color than you would see on the TV show. It's more of a dark gray than a black, 
and he does have the splotches of brown or tan on him and the weapons are lighter color as well I like that this one has the working holster but this is basically the same sculpt as the six inch black series Death Trooper you would have gotten around the time that Rogue One came out in fact I have one around here somewhere but um, yeah it's just uh, the lighter color different paint scheme to represent the concept art but the very cool thing about that is that it comes with these Imperial credits and it is not metal I have now confirmed that it's not metal it's just a kind of a light plastic but it's not uh, bendable or anything it is sturdy enough to remain in this shape and then okay I had to double check what this spelled in Arabic because I was pretty sure it was R O W E and yes I wasn't sure about the W I wasn't hundred percent sure but yes this is R O W E but I have no idea what that means on an Imperial credit what that could possibly stand for if somebody knows what R O W E means if that's an acronym abbreviation for something please let me know in the comments and I'm pretty sure all these credits are going to say that exact same thing in fact we're gonna move on to another of the credit collection figures from Kenner and Hasbro it's from Hasbro with the Kenner label on it and yeah we got another one of the credits a slightly different color so this one's kind of a dark bronze and this one is a lighter bronze and then pop out the Cara Dune figure she's got a knife this time and a blaster and oops, blaster rifle okay there's the credit collection Cara Dune her the strap on her blaster rifle the heavy blaster rifle here keeps coming loose it is intended to do that this part is supposed to pop out of here and then this part clips on the front there but it comes out very easily I don't have the six inch Cara Dune uh, this this is six inch I don't have the non credit edition yet I've been looking for it tough to get um, but yeah cool looking figure and again this is the Cara Dune as she looks in the concept art so very different colors than the actual show let's do the heavy infantry Mandalorian next again this is another figure that I don't have yet in the regular version and I really would like it but it's very expensive on eBay there haven't been any conventions to pick them up this year here's the credit that it comes with we can compare it to the other one so just different shades this one's more of a silver and the other two are just different shades of bronze now we'll pop them out oh a nice big sturdy figure here and let me put on his weapon all right there he is the heavy infantry Mandalorian played by Jon Favreau in Mandalorian season one this is a really nice figure I wish I had this in the regular colors the way he looks on screen I haven't picked it up yet as I said this is the credit edition with some really wacky looking colors here blues and yellows and browns it's still a great figure really sturdy I love how these tubes come down from the backpack go into his arm here and then this other longer tube goes around his other side and feeds into the gun here and I love how he holds the weapon this big heavy blaster just such a cool looking figure and I really like how sturdy and heavy it is just uh, pretty neat I will look out for a deal to get the the previous version the regular version of this toy because I really want to get that okay that brings us to the final one of these credit collection figures and that is the Mandalorian himself we pop this open here Oops. 
you're keeping track, this is the third figure of Din Djarin that I've opened from this box. And there's still another one to go. Let me put his weapons on. Okay. This one does have a working holster as well. But I've got him holding the smaller blaster here. And I've put the pulse rifle in the back. And like I said, the 6-inch version, it doesn't stay in there quite as well as the smaller one. Does. I do like the coloring on this figure. Uh, obviously it's going to be quite a bit more exaggerated than the regular version, but this is the credit edition of the Mandalorian from his early armor with uh, more pronounced reds, blues, uh, not yellows, but kind of tans and the green cape or cloak around his shoulders there. That's a pretty nice looking one. I do like that one. Okay, we're going to do the last of the bounty collection. The child little figures. And this is the one where he's just kind of standing there and he's chewing on that chain with the Mythosaurus skull necklace. Another cute, the child, oh, and his little feet are tucked behind him like he's kneeling. Very nice. I did forget to show you the credit from that last credit collection figure, which is a, a gold color. So you got gold, a couple different shades of bronze, and a silver one. All four of them there. That's what they all look like together. And let's do the Star Wars Mission Fleet speeder bike with the Mandalorian and the child. Let me see if I can just tear this open here. Oh, this is pretty cool. This is a nice toy. This is a pretty nice toy for younger kids. I think they would definitely get a kick out of that if you can find it, if it's readily available. This is going to be a good one for the young younger kids. He does have all the weapons. He does have the jetpack. And we have this firing missile and an invisible stand. Okay, here's the Mandalorian riding on that speeder bike. And the idea is that he's towing this little hover pram behind him. Although, you know, in the show it would just float along along with him as it has done and uh, you put little baby Yoda in there like that pretty cool and it does have the firing projectile I'll just press the button here let me take these two guys out of here and I'll show you what they look like off the speeder bike from this series so there's Mando and the child from the Star Wars Mission Fleet, front side, back side, I've got the jet pack on him right now, but that does come off, and you can replace it with the cape or the cloak, and he's also got the pulse rifle, put that in his hand. And the regular blaster can go in his other hand. The hand, hands do come off fairly easily, but there you go. There he is holding both weapons. And there's the child again from this set. That's a nice set for the younger kids who are into the Mandalorian. Then let's do the armor. Yeah, I'm really excited about this one. Tear this open, slide it out here. And there she is, the armorer. I've been excited to get this one since they announced it. I had really hoped they were going to make the armor in the six inch black series and my wish came true and there there it is she's got the welding torch and the tongs if 
from those famous scenes where she's making the Beskar armor and the other weapons for the Mandalorian. There's her nice little kind of like woolen cloak that goes around the back. Her shawl goes around the back of her uh, torso there. That's pretty cool. And the armor on her is pretty great. Really like the detail on the helmet. There's the back side. And yeah, just a great addition to the Black Series for the Mandalorian. Super glad to have that. And let's do the final action figure that came in this box, which is another of the title character, the Mandalorian, Din Djarin. But this is the one of him in the Beskar armor in the six inch, the Black Series, uh, regular edition, non-credit collection. So this is intended to represent how he actually looks on screen in the armor that we've seen him in the most on the show since he got it in episode three in the first season. He put his weapons on here. Okay, uh, I've got it all together. The one thing I'm a little confused by here is uh, once I've got the jet pack on, the cape hangs very awkwardly off to the side. Um, I imagine you're supposed to take this off by removing the helmet. You can take off the cape and then it'll look a little better there, but I, I didn't want to force the helmet off. I wasn't sure if this is supposed to come off. So if you know that the helmet's supposed to come off, please leave a comment. Um, but otherwise, I think it looks great. Working holster, again, obviously, you got the pulse rifle and the armor just looks fantastic. So this is after he's gotten the jet pack at the end of season one, and it just fits into the grooves there on the back of his torso. And you can't put the pulse rifle in the back at the same time that the jetpack is there either. So, you know, this has to pop off and the pulse rifle slides into one of these holes here. But then you can have them just kind of walking around like this without the jetpack or whatever you want to do. Uh, I still think it looks great. Nice and shiny without being the uh, carbonized version, but this armor is obviously supposed to be very shiny on the show. And yeah, can't really complain about the Mandalorian in the Beskar armor with the jetpack, Black Series Hasbro. Okay, let's pop open the Monopoly game here. Monopoly Star Wars The Mandalorian. You got the Mythosaur skull there, and I've already sliced open the tape here, so we're going to open this up. I have not looked inside yet. We're going to see what we got in here. Okay. <laughs> Inside this box is another box that looks like a Horatio Sands character, I think, from the first episode, Frozen in Carbonite. That's pretty interesting. It's supposed to be a Carbonite box. It's got all the dials and lights and switches on the side. There's the bottom. And then on the back it says Monopoly Star Wars. So let's open up this inside box. And you got the instruction manual. There. Open up the board. I'll take a look at that. Cool. Let's see. So here's Go. And then you got Public House. We'll go through all the spaces. You got Armorer's Workshop, Imperial Advance. Arvala 7, Jawa Camp, the Mudhorn Cave, Nikto Encampment, Vapor Ranch, Imperial Advance, uh, Sorgan Forest, Klaatuinian Wikiup. Uh, this is a village. Common House, another Imperial Advance. Tatooine Dune Sea, the Sniper's Nest, Mos Eisley Cantina, Hangar 3-5, Imperial Advance, Navarro Lava Field, and then the Imperial Safe House is the most valuable of all the spaces. So uh, that's the board, and then you got some cards. It looks like some of the rules are going to be a little different than your average Monopoly, I think. There's a 
the back side of the cards you got all the Imperial characters on there. Moff Gideon, Incinerator, Trooper, Death Trooper. Interesting. Here's all the credits. Looks like this has two different colors of credits. And then here are all your cards. Let's see what this one says, the public house. So these are going to be the properties and stuff. And you got the Mythosaur skull on there. I like the dice. Interesting colored dice, a kind of a lime green and then a, a Beskar type die. That's neat. And then let's take a look at all these tokens. Oh, I like the material. Very hard. I don't even know what material that would be, but nice and hard. It's not plastic. That's for sure. Um, there's the child, number one. And we got the Mandalorian. Din Jaren, and then Cara Dune, Kawil, the Ugnaught, IG-11, Assassin Droid, Bounty Droid, a Red Stormtrooper, so I guess he's supposed to be the Incinerator Trooper. A Death Trooper. A nice matte black Death Trooper. That's what I like to see. Great feel to these heavy duty tokens. Really like them. And then finally Moff Gideon in a dark gray. Kind of like a bust of, of Moff Gideon. That's how all these uh, look. And that's Star Wars Monopoly, The Mandalorian. I'm curious to play this and see if the rules are different at all. And uh, maybe they have some rules specific to this themed edition. We'll have to check that out. Okay, this is everything that was included in this giant box of Mandalorian toys from Hasbro all... The Credit Collection, the Vintage Collection, the Black Series, the Bounty Collection, the Mission Fleet guys over here, except for one thing that we still have to look at. Oh, I forgot to mention the Monopoly, of course, from Hasbro. And then we've got, lastly, the Mandalorian Dark Saber. Let's check that out next. All right, let's open this baby up. There we go. The Dark Saber. As wielded by Moff Gideon in The Mandalorian. And there's an activation button right here. So there are a couple different modes. You can just switch between them using the switch on the bottom of the hilt. The mode we were seeing was mode one, and then mode two is like this. I'm guessing this one stays on longer because that first one, first one just shut off after a few seconds. So mode two is if you want it to stay on, stay glowing as you're fighting and playing with it. Of course it makes the uh, impact noises. Okay, next, I want to see what it looks like when we activate this with the lights off. Here we go. Pretty 
pretty neat. Alright, thanks so much for watching this very long unboxing of all these great Star Wars toys from Hasbro. And again, thank you to Hasbro for sending them over for me to unbox and review for you here on the Laughing Place YouTube channel. Please visit LaughingPlace.com for all your Disney news and opinions whenever you want. And uh, enjoy Mandalorian. New episodes of The Mandalorian every Friday right now on Disney+. Plus. That's it for me. I'm Mike Solestino. Thanks for watching. We'll see you real soon.